Welcome to lecture 15, section 3.3 of the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. Properties of Determinants. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. First, theorem 3.3.1, determinant of a matrix product. If A and B are square matrices of order N, then the determinant of the product equals the product of the determinants, i.e., the determinant of A times B equals the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Second, theorem 3.3.2, determinant of a scalar multiple of a matrix. If A is an n by n matrix and C is a scalar, i.e. A is a matrix of order n and C is a real number, then the determinant of C times A is given by the determinant of C A equals C raised to the n times the determinant of A, i.e. I pull out my scalar C from the determinant and raise it to the power n. And do not forget that A is an n by n matrix. Beautiful. Third, theorem 3.3.3, .3, determinant of an invertible matrix. A square matrix A is invertible, non-singular, has an inverse, if and only if the determinant of that matrix is non-zero i.e. A inverse exists if and only if the determinant is non-zero. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. The only time that the inverse does not exist is when the determinant equals zero. The fourth theorem, 3.3.4, determinant of an inverse matrix. If A is an invertible matrix, i.e. non-singular matrix, a matrix that has an inverse, then the determinant of the inverse of A equals 1 divided by the determinant of A. And do not forget that the determinant of A is a scalar, is a real number. And it cannot be zero because A inverse exists. That is important because you cannot divide by zero. Here are some equivalent conditions for a non-singular matrix, matrix with inverse, invertible matrix. If A is a matrix of order N, i.e. an N by N matrix, then the following statements are equivalent. Number one. A is invertible. Number two, AX equals B has a unique solution for every N by one column matrix B. And you can see quickly how to prove that one implies two. If A is invertible, i.e. A inverse exists, then I can multiply both sides from the left by A inverse, and A inverse times A will give me I, so I'm left with just X. And on the right hand side, I have A inverse times B, which is my unique solution. Look at the third one. AX equals zero, that is the homogeneous system, has only the trivial solution. Of course, if A inverse exists, then multiplying both sides by A inverse, I'm left with X equals A inverse times zero, which is zero. So only the trivial solution. Number four, A is rho equivalent to I i.e. I can use elementary operations and move from A to the identity matrix IN. Number five, A can be written as a product of elementary matrices that follows straight from point number four. And number six, the determinant of A is different from zero. That too follows very directly from the properties we've seen above. So the proof of these equivalent conditions would be left as a simple exercise for serious students. To prove this, what I want you to do is prove that 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, 3 implies 4, 4 implies 5, 5 implies 6, and 6 implies 1. Another theorem, 
3.3.6 determinant of a transpose if a is a square matrix doesn't matter what the order of a is then the determinant of a equals the determinant of the transpose of a this is beautiful now one little concluding problem suppose a is a square matrix that is also skew symmetric i.e a transpose equals negative a your task is to prove that if a is an n by n skew symmetric matrix then the determinant of a equals negative 1 raised to the power n times the determinant of a observe that i can rewrite this in all kinds of forms but let's just use this form right now and this is put here as uh, a guide to help you picture how proofs from this section should be approached proof a skew symmetric implies that a transpose equals negative 1 times a i hit determinants on both sides determinant of a transpose equals determinant negative 1 times a my negative 1 is my scalar c so that simply means the determinant of a transpose equals negative 1 raised to the power n times the determinant of a But the determinant of A equals the determinant of A transpose. So that equals determinant of A, negative 1 to the N, determinant of A, i.e. I have exactly what I'm trying to prove. So I'm done. So this should serve as an example to guide you as you approach various problems uh, in this section. You would see things involving symmetric matrices, skew symmetric matrices idempotent matrices and so on and so forth and following this pro strategy you should be able to handle each one of them thank you very much